So I was going to make a video today about how the inheritance cycle's originality doesn't really help it. In fact, it seriously hinders its potential as a fantasy series, and compare that to why the Wheel of Time's kind of homages to classic fantasy, especially in either world, really do help the series and help propel it to its full potential. But then I realized it's Halloween. And I love Halloween. I actually didn't realize it was until today. I've been extraordinarily busy, but I'm not gonna let Spooktober go by without making one, at least semi-Halloween related video. And with that being said, let's go ahead and do a deep dive into one of my favorite horror authors of all time, H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft was born August 20th, 1890 in Providence, Rhode Island. He, he died, died in 1937, which was fairly young even for the time. But while he was alive, he wrote some of the most prolific horror writings of all time. During his early life, Lovecraft did definitely have some close encounters with mental illness within his family and loved ones. And this might have been inspiration for what resulted in truly cultural shifting material being written by this man. H.P. Lovecraft claims a lot of his works were inspired by dreams he had, and if that is true, his dreams are more terrifying than anything I have ever experienced in my life. And if you doubt me, you need to understand that H.P. Lovecraft is really the founder of the idea of cosmic horror. So this obviously begs the question, what exactly is cosmic horror? Cosmic horror is the idea or belief that humanity as a whole means nothing. In the grand scheme of things, we have no destiny, we have no purpose, we are just a random accident that could be wiped out at any minute. Expand this to go even further. There is no manifest destiny for our future. We are not bound to conquer and colonize the stars. In fact, in one false move, we could accidentally eradicate ourselves. This can obviously be taken to a very personal level on an individual psychology or in the more mass trajectory as us as a people. These ideas are really terrifying and go against what a lot of human culture rallies against. We are constantly telling ourselves we are special, we are unique, there is a purpose to our life. Life. Something out in the universe loves us. H.P. Lovecraft rallies against this idea hard. His writings planted the seed that maybe we aren't anything special. Maybe there's no god looking out for our fate. Even if there are gods, why would they care about us? We are an insignificant speck of dust in an infinite black sea. A roaming black hole could wipe us out any moment. We've gotten lucky so far, it has not. So when some people read H.P. Lovecraft's writings, they often sit back and go, well, that wasn't really scary because there was no monster with a knife. There was no Michael Myers or Dracula. And what you have to understand is that's not what his brand of horror is going for. H.P. Lovecraft is not trying to scare you with a monster. H.P. Lovecraft's trying to target how you feel secure and how you manage to get through life as an individual with consciousness in the world. His most famous creation, Cthulhu, embodies this idea wonderfully. Yes, it actually is a monster. In fact, it's a god. Cthulhu is a god that if even a human looks upon, they are driven insane. There is nothing we could possibly do to kill, damage, or hurt this creation. That being said, Cthulhu does not want to wipe out humanity. Cthulhu does not care about us. Cthulhu could accidentally wipe us out as a side effect. It wouldn't be a deliberate act. It would be a, oh, that's just a result of this greater goal. Obviously, this falls right into the idea of cosmic nihilism. It goes so far as to even say that humanity is not the objective. It's not the target. It's just something that happens to get caught in the crossfire. To me, especially, that is terrifying. I actually am a bit of a nihilist. I do not believe we as people have any inherent purpose, right, or meaning. I think humanity is a beautiful thing, and the fact that we have no set destiny is actually better in my mind. It means we create our own, and we are responsible for our destiny. That's beautiful. But there are some darker side effects to that idea. What if we fail? Our future really could go Star Trek or Mad Max. It just really depends how we walk the line. And if you believe in Lovecraft's writings or you follow his ideology at all, you realize that one false step could lead you more towards the dystopia than utopia. And this idea might seem commonplace to you, but you have to understand when he was coming up with these ideas. It wasn't during the 60s or 70s when new ideas were flourished and nurtured. No, this was before World War I. This was back when the Wild West was still kind of a thing. Hell, Red Dead Redemption 2 takes place during H.P. Lovecraft's life. And I'm not saying that Lovecraft's brand of horror is by default the best, but I really enjoy an author who tries to attack something, who tries to tear apart a commonly accepted idea. 
idea, and basically all of Lovecraft's bookography does this. He started writing pulp stories for magazines, which never actually reached fame during his life. He became famous post-death. He became famous after he died, which is rather sad, but he has become, without a doubt, one of the most influential horror writers of all time. In fact, I see great influences from Lovecraft in the modern-day Goliath, Stephen King. In fact, I do find that Stephen King takes Lovecraft's interpretations of cosmic nihilism one step further. King will go as far as to say even the reader's perspective, even you reading the book, are meaningless. You're just witnessing this series of events and you will not get all of the answers. Things will not be spelled out for you because, honestly, you being involved with the story, Stephen King has crafted this narrative very carefully. His created worlds span multiple stories and interlink in ways that we as the readers will never be given answers to. He's taking this idea of cosmic nihilism to a point where even you as the reader are not deserving of all the answers, which I really respect and love. I could be stretching a little bit here, but the more I read Stephen King, the more I see Lovecraft seeping in. But his influences don't just stop there. The incredibly popular modern show Rick and Morty actually embraces a lot of Lovecraft's core ideals, cosmic nihilism, the idea that there's no manifest destiny, there's no purpose to our existence, we have no right to anything. Life is an accident or a byproduct of the universe existing. Rick is a nihilist. He is the smartest man in the room. He sees this, and due to that, he is miserable. I actually take this idea even further, and again, I could be stretching here, but many classic horror movies, I really do see, once again, Lovecraft being the inspiration. Alien, for example, our first contact with other life in the universe. It's not some beautiful thing where it elevates us as a species. It's chaotic. It seems purposeless. This small crew who are borderline helpless are caught up in a plot between a corporate overlord and just wanting money. There's nothing they can do except try and survive, and their plight certainly seems helpless. They didn't go full Lovecraft in Alien, obviously it doesn't have a miserable ending, but that movie on its own, disregarding a lot of the sequels, which have not been as good, really does seem an exercise to me in at least the basic Lovecraftian ideas. If you have not read any of his books, the most famous one you've probably heard of at least is called The Call of Cthulhu, and is absolutely worth your time. Most of his works, though, are collections of short stories, and if you're a short story fan like myself, you can binge them like crazy. I highly recommend you do, because you will see more and more of Lovecraft's omnipresent influence in modern horror as you go. Before him, this idea that there's no way humanity could win, that we are just an insignificant sack of nothing, didn't really exist. Humanity was always seen as this purposeful thing, the peak evolution, what the universe is really striving for. Lovecraft simply rejects this idea, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Yes, Lovecraft uses this idea to craft some of the best horror stories ever written, but personally, I actually see this as a very good thing. If humanity had some grand purpose, or if humanity was destined to do something, that would be kind of boring. We'd have to just walk this one path, and then we'd get to the end, and okay, we, we walked our destiny. No, the universe is terrifying, but we can do with it what we will. We as humanity are alone as far as we know. Even if there is other life out there, it's probably so far away we can never come in direct contact with it. At least, not in our lifetimes. But that doesn't mean there are infinite possibilities around us and so many different directions we can take it. Anyway guys, that is just my interpretation of Lovecraft and why I am deeply in love with his overall philosophies and writings. And I'd love to know what are your thoughts on cosmic nihilism in the comments down below. Does it scare the ever-living hell out of you, which it probably should, or does it really inspire you, which it also probably should? Give me your overall thoughts on this idea that we, as humanity, are are kind of pointless. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you've not already. Hit the <laughs> Yeah!